Welcome as we worship this evening. Welcome to those of you who are at home. Today we worship according to the Holden Evening Prayer Service. We begin. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. Stay with us now, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. And shine within your people the
Let us pray. May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense. And may your presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. So in this stressful time, when normally we would gather together in this place, and there are extraordinarily few of us in this place, and uh, most of you are home, we focus on peace. Jesus says to us, do not let your hearts be troubled. And you would think if there's any time to be troubled, it would be a time like this. You go to the grocery store, there's nothing in the shelves. Social distancing, I'm not sure if I've even heard the word before, the phrase. The coronavirus, also a new thing. And yet Jesus, in the midst of all of these things, calls us, invites us, instructs us, and says, you don't need to be afraid. Do not let your hearts be troubled. So my question tonight is, where is it that you put your trust? This last week I saw two black Ebert squirrels making a nest in a tree. I knew they were making nests because there were all kinds of uh, green uh, pine needles on the, underneath the tree. So I looked up and there they were scurrying back and forth making a nest in an area of the tree that was uh, rather dense. Working very hard, one coming, doing some stuff, and then leaving and the other one coming. They were making a nest for babies that would be coming. But when I looked closer, I realized they were in danger because the place they were making the nest was in a broken branch from one of our last uh, snowstorms. If they make a nest in that place, pretty soon that branch will come uh, falling down and uh, no more nest, no more safety. Where do you put your trust? In this season of Lent, we are looking at, what is it that Jesus tells us? In the Transfiguration, the Father said to the disciples, listen to him, listen to Jesus. And so at the very end of the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 6, and 7, Jesus says these words, Everyone who hears my words and does them is like a wise man who built his house upon the rock. The rain fell, the floods came, the wind blew, and beat upon the house, but it did not fall because it had been founded upon the rock. Jesus says, those who hear my words, and it comes right at the tail end of the Sermon on the Mount, in which he has just said words like we heard a couple weeks ago, do not worry about your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, what you shall wear. Look at the birds of the air, they neither sow or reap or gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. And which of us, which of you, can increase their span of life even by this much by worry? And then Jesus reminds us, so seek first the kingdom. Seek first him. And after that, all things will be given you as well. Jesus says, everyone who hears my word and does them, who hears what I say and takes them to heart, lives the invitation, lives the promise, lives by every word that I speak, is like someone who builds not up in some tree on a branch that's about to fall, but rather on a firm foundation of rock. They will be like a wise man, building on the rock, 
The rain fell, the floods came, the wind blew and beat upon that house, but it did not fall because it was founded upon the rock. It's reminiscent of some words from Isaiah chapter 26. Lord, you keep them in perfect peace whose minds are stayed on you because they trust in you. You keep those in perfect peace whose minds are stayed in you because they trust in you. And then Isaiah goes on, trust in the Lord. For he is an everlasting rock. The wise men built on the rock. The winds came, the floods, the trouble, the social distancing, the empty shelves, the anxiety. The wind blew upon that house, but it did not fall. Built on the rock. And the rock is Jesus. Listen to some of what he says. John 14, great chapter to be reading in this period of time. Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. He goes on and talks about building a house and there's room for us all. I am the way, the truth, the life, he says. And then in chapter 13, I will not leave you orphans. I will come. I will not leave you alone. And many of you in your homes might be alone, or two or three, and feeling cut off from others. Jesus promises, I will not leave you orphaned. And then in cha same chapter 14 of John 23, those who love me, and keep my word. My Father will love, and we will come and make our home with them." Such a great promise that even in the midst of our cut-offness, our social distancing, it is the Lord who promises to come to us in our own homes, our own kitchens, our own living rooms, in our own space, in our own lives. And then he wraps it up in verse 27, chapter 14 of John. Peace. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give peace to you like the world gives. It's not simply the absence of conflict, the absence of struggle. Rather, Jesus' peace is palpable. Jesus' peace is his very presence. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give you. And then he ends up with the very same words he began in the first verse of John chapter 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. Let us pray. Lord, with so much going on around us and within us, so much that is new, so much that we hear and see and feel that may be foreign or magnified, we thank you for your promise that you will not leave us orphaned you will not leave us all alone, but you promise to come. You promise to come and make your home even with us. You remind us that we don't have to be afraid, for we put our trust in you. You will keep in perfect peace those whose hearts and whose trust are stayed on thee. You are our rock, and it is you in whom we place our trust. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored, for God is with you. You shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus, the chosen one of
God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. 